Hello guys, in this video I'll be talking about the poem Prayer of a Monolith by Temsla Ao. So before going deep into the poem Prayer of a Monolith, I'll give you a brief overview about Temsla Ao. Temsla Ao, she is an Indian poet from Nagaland. I would like to be considered as a poet first. This is a dialogue told by Temsla Ao. Her first best work also came out in the form of poetry. Talking about her, she was born in the year 1945 in Assam. She also did her schooling like education from Nagaland and Assam. And she served as a professor in Northeastern Hill University, Assam since 1975 as professor of English. Talking about her works, she, uh, she has uh, mainly written uh, her poetry works like uh, when we uh, look into her poetry, it is just like uh, revisiting the our tribe in Nagaland. It mostly tries to uh, give more importance to the legends and myths in our tribe in Nagaland. And also, uh, she has not mentioned anywhere that much about Indian nation. Apart from uh, India being trying to, how to, uh, just how it is trying to destroy the lives of common people. Because she has always given more importance to the people. Because she also was uh, brought up in such a kind of challenging circumstance. And just all circumstance, she became a professor of English. So talking about how her awards and all, uh, she has received many awards. And out of that, um, three major awards are like, she received Padma Sri Award in the year 2007. Then she has received Sahitya Academy Award in the year 2013. Then she also received gold, Governor's Gold Medal in the year 2009. So that is uh, about her. She has also written, she is also not, not uh, she is not only a poet, but at the same time she is a poet, short story writer, ethnographer. She has uh, many things to do, but uh, she always likes her to be considered as a poet first. That is about her. Then uh, most of her works, it has eco-criticism elements in it because she advocates uh, uh, the nature, uh, how to save nature. She always tries to save nature um, every time. So that is how uh, themes uh, related to uh, nature comes into her poetry or in all other works. Then uh, most of uh, her poetry and all her works talks about the common people in Nagaland, how they live and their situation, their circumstances are all described by her in this poem. So this poem, Prayer of a Monolith, also has uh, something to do with alienation, dislocation and a different type of overviewing how it is a story of a monolith and uh, how she is personifying the monolith because monolith is the character throughout in the play uh, in the po throughout the poem she is trying to give uh, life to monolith because monolith is uh, uh, who is uh, monolith is speaking throughout the poem we can see i i every time like throughout the poem we can see the thing i i i this i refers to the monolith and monolith you know no it is uh, uh, stone so which is used to engrave and which is used to make different statue like things and all so it doesn't have life but the monolith is speaking throughout the poem so it uh, so through uh, by that we can understand that how she is giving she is to how she is trying to give life to the monolith and it's a beautiful poem we can go through the poem line by line so i think you have got an overview about the poet Temsila Avo. So we'll move on to the poem. So let us move on to the poem. We'll analyze the poem line by line. Look at the lines. I stand at the village gate in mockery of my former state. Once I stood in a deep forest, proud and content, my beloved of the laughing dimble standing by my side. Then 
one day some strangers came poking and prying stabbing at a mound here and sizing up a boulder there suddenly an old one sighted me and cried ah oh, this is the one this one will do the others who saw her shook their heads and murmured but not this one just look at the ugly crack i protested and pleaded please do not leave her it is only a dimple left by a passing lightning but they ignored my pleas and went about their ways they dislodged me from my moorings they tore me from her side they chipped and chiseled they gave me altered proportions they pulled me to the village strapped to a makeshift carriage and planted the maid over me as their new found trophy when the party reached the village children ran out in glee colorful women ululated while drunken men capered capered round my new placed mooring of misery even the village mongrels rushed out and raised their legs against my chiseled side staking their calm claim to the general pride as i stood in my shame for someone else's fame thus i stand now at the village gate in mockery of my former state o oh, you elements when you pass by the forest and my beloved quarries just tell her i have gone to my glory but please please never tell her the story of my ignominy this entire poem i have read this poem in order to make you aware that how this poem goes before going deep into the lines i'll just say what is happening within the poem the monolith is referred to as i throughout the poem I have mentioned in the intro part itself why she is just personifying the monolith the monolith it also has emotions like that she is moving the poetry in like that and in that way she is uh, explaining throughout so this monolith is uh, taken away from its moorings that is from the deep forest and is now taken by some strangers to their village and the monolith is shaped in a different manner so that it is kept near their village gate so that is a, a that is considered as a mark of uh, achievement by the village people so for them that uh, particular thing that a monolith is a blessing or that is a kind of achievement for them and it's it adds fame on them but for the monolith it uh, means like this location alienation from its own place so it affects mentally uh, and psychologically the monolith because in this poem we know that even though uh, really monolith is not having life in this poem monolith is the main character so it is having life and the emotions which the monolith uh, is undergoing is explained throughout the poem and apart from that it is also conveying a Uh, an indirect love story it's not an indirect love story but it's a, uh, it also conveys a love story uh, between the two monoliths so uh, in the deep forest there are two monoliths one is the main monolith who is uh, conveying these ideas to the audience that is a main monolith i think that main monolith may be a man like will be like a male only no because he is uh, the he or the main monolith is comparing to uh, her, his lover as her so her in the sense that he might be a man no in that case so that is why i am saying like that and these two monoliths are there in the deep forest and from there uh, strangers are coming and picking this main monolith from there in order to make some statue or something to keep near the village near their village gate but they are avoiding they are not taking uh, his uh, lover the next monolith who is there next beneath him uh, not beneath him besides him uh, she, she is not taken why she is not taken because there is a crack uh, in that monolith because of some lightning lightning has made that crack within her so that made 
her ugly from the perspective of the strangers so that is why they are not taking that uh, lady monolith we can say like that okay in order to make you more understand uh, in order to make you understand i am saying like lady monolith okay the lover of the main monolith so but uh, this main monolith now the main monolith is considering that particular crack as a dimple and here this monolith main monolith he is saying that that adds beauty to my beloved and that dimple is adding more beauty to my beloved and please because of that please don't take her uh, please don't leave her here if you are taking me please take her too because we cannot live apart like that uh, the emotional connection between the two monoliths are also being described here that is why i have read the poem throughout so i think you got an idea what is happening in between and then at the end he is saying like uh, you have to say like i'll ex you have to say that i am happy here only never ever say my condition my harsh miser misery condition to my beloved that is what he is saying towards the end of the poem so now let us uh, read line by line okay i stand at the village gate in mockery of my former state once i stood in a deep forest proud and content my beloved of the laughing dimble standing by my side then one day some strangers came poking and trying stabbing at a mound here and sizing up a boulder there so what is this monolith describing now i am standing at the village gate so this monolith is trying to recollect his own past how he was and where he was and what type of life this particular monolith lived and now what is his condition that is described by the monolith to uh, the audience or the readers now in mockery of my former state what was my former state i was there in the deep forest i was enjoying i was uh, proud and content being there being in the deep forest because no one was there to control us we were all alone we can do anything like uh, these monoliths are given life now so in that case they are uh, were independent in their own moorings or in their own deep forest no one was there to control they were having their own freedom but now in village people are considering them as a thing to showcase so that is the difference which this monolith felt here my beloved of the laughing dimble standing by my side when i was in the deep forest there was my beloved just beside me so that we were in a company so i didn't uh, uh, feel isolated i was not uh, having uh, any trouble out there but here i'm all alone no one is there for giving me company and my beloved is also there alone all alone in the deep forest so this monolith is very sad thinking about her at the same time thinking about this monolith himself then one day what happened you know some strangers came poking and trying one day we were standing and we were chit chatting with each other in the deep forest like we were just next to each other so we were communicating and all on a sudden no some strangers they came poking and trying so they were just came uh, coming to look uh, something like they were giving like uh, a rough idea like they want to do something or they want to collect something from the deep forest like they gave or they informed uh, um, as an idea like they gave an, a vague idea regarding why, why they uh, regarding their arrival they just gave a vague idea because uh, by seeing them we could understand that they were about to take something from the deep forest like that stabbing at a mound here and sizing up a boulder there so they were looking everywhere suddenly out of all these strangers one old man no he sighted me he looked at me and he sighted in the sense uh, he just uh, gave an overall look at that particular monolith and he just thought right oh this is the perfect one which i was looking for and i am going to take this like like that attitude he was having and he thought and he told to all the other strangers out there that 
Huh, this is the one. This one will do. Okay. This is the one I was looking for and let us take this. This one will do for our thing. Okay. Whatever uh, we are planning, this uh, particular monolith is enough for that. We will be able to make it. That is what the old man is among the group was saying. The others who saw her, the others, the other people, the other strangers who saw her in the sense they were standing next to each other. No. So the strangers after point after the old man pointing out me, the main monolith, next to me, she was there. My beloved was there. So the strangers, after seeing her, what they told you know. But not this one. Just look at the ugly crack. No, no, no. We can't imagine taking this ugly monolith. Just look at her crack. An ugly crack is there in her. So, we are, we want to take her. Like that, they told. So, that is all the things monolith is imagining and monolith is what is saying. I protested and pleaded, please do not leave her. It is only a dimple left by a passing lightning. But I pleaded uh, with all my energy. I pleaded to them. I protested. I did various kinds of acts. Like at first I pleaded them like, please, can you please take her with me? And the other thing what they, he did was he protested. After they are not uh, listening to my pleasing, I protested. Please take her too with me, along with me. But they denied what they did. And, they all, and he also told that it is only a dimble for me. That crack is only a dimple. She is my lover. And that crack, it adds beauty to her. Not any ugly kind of feeling. Not any ugly appearance she is having. That is a simple dimple. Left by a passing lightning. That one lightning has made that particular crack. And that is a dimple. And how you can term her ugly because of that. In fact, it adds beauty to her. That is what the monolith is saying. But they ignored my pleas and went about their ways. They dislodged me from my moorings. They tore me from her side. They chipped and chiseled. They gave me altered proportions. They pulled me to the village, strapped to a makeshift carriage and planted the maid over me as their newfound trophy. When the party reached the village, children ran out in glee. So, but they ignored my pleas. They didn't care for my pleas. And they went about their ways. Whatever they were planning to do or to which place they were about to move, they left to that place along with me, taking me along with them. They dislodged me from my moorings. So, they have taken away they have taken me away from my moorings. Moorings here refers to the deep forest where uh, this monolith initially was there. So they took me from my moorings. They tore me from her side. I was next to her. I was standing next to her. And they tore me from her side. They chipped and chiseled. They have just carved me in shapes which they wanted to. And they gave me altered proportions in different way. They have chiseled and chipped in altered proportions to, so as to make me uh, as per their likes. Like as per uh, what they were planning to do, they were doing with me. They pulled me to the village. After that, they pulled me to the village in a makeshift carriage. So in a carriage, I was taken to the village and planted the maid over me. Now I am not the initial me, no. I have a lot of changes are there within me, like made me, made over, made over in the sense a lot of uh, changes have happened to me because they have chiseled, they have chipped, my entire appearance might have changed. So the made over me, they have now the made over me was planted there in front of the village gate as their new found trophy. So uh, I was considered like an achievement by them. They have did a lot of things to make me like this and they have just placed me in front of the village gate as a mark of pride for the villagers like that then what they were about to say when the party reached the village 
children ran out in glee. So the people, no, the strange men or the village men who were taking me to the village, they were very, like when they approached the village or when they came to the village, the children, they ran out in glee. The children out there was very, the children, they were very happy like anything. They were about to welcome me in that way. Not me, the village people who have taken like this much uh, task, a heavy task to make me like this and to place me over uh, that particular uh, in front of the village so that as a mark of fame for the entire village people. Colorful women ululated while drunken men captured round my new place, mooring of misery. So, my, in, my condition is, you, you can imagine, I'm all alone, my beloved is not there with me and for some people I'm just standing here, for someone's fame I'm standing here, I have lost my pride, proud, everything and I'm just like this, mooring of misery. Even the village mongrels, the dancing, the people who have drunk, no, they were dancing next to me, like uh, around me. They have found a space to dance. The women are happy, enjoying, standing around me, rushed out and raised their legs against my chisel side, staking their claim to the general pride as I stood in my shame. I'm having, I was having my, my own shame because I was not there because I lost my pride. I'm standing for someone, like for the villagers as a mark of fame like that. Thus I stand now at the village gate and this is how I have came here and this is how I'm standing in front of the village gate in mockery of my former state. Now, this is, this was my former state. And just imagine my condition now. It is a mockery, no? That is it. Oh, you elements. These elements can be anything like wind. It can be winds. It can be clouds or anything passing by. Winds, clouds and all. It passes through everywhere, no? So, this kind of elements which flew through every, all the places. Can you do me a favor for me? When you pass by the forest, the deep forest where I was there, and my beloved queries, just tell her, I have gone to my glory, but please, please, please never tell her the story of my ignominy. You have to uh, say to my beloved that I'm very happy here, enjoying the place here. I'm very proud being here. And all like this, you have to say to my beloved so that she'll be happy. But never ever, please, please don't say my condition, my pitiful, like misery, misery condition, which I'm experiencing and the feeling of isolation, which uh, I'm experiencing. Please don't say that to her because she'll be unhappy or she'll be sad. So please. Never ever say this to her. This is what uh, the monolith is saying at the end of the poem. So this is a poem which conveys uh, the story of a monolith who was uh, like monolith in the sense uh, as it is a living uh, like as it, as, it, uh, as it is given life by the poet. I'm saying like this monolith have experienced this uh, it has experienced like all the forms of dislocation alienation and everything so because of that what all uh, sacrifices this monolith has made and what all happens like what all melancholic situation which this monolith has overcome because of these strange people who are trying to uh, take away from take them away from their own places like post-colonial theory can also be applied in this context.
that is how the colonizers are trying to shift the colonized from their own native places so in that way also you can analyze so hope you understood the poem very well thank you